Hi, in junior secondary, you have learned about the so-called heat transfer methods, and there are three, including conduction, convection, and radiation. So in this video, I'll quickly re recap with you uh, on what you have learned. And this is a PowerPoint that I used when I was teaching junior science on this topic. So here is a very simple animation showing you that if they, you have a fire and you can see the particles will start to vibrate on the left hand side and passing on to the right and this is the idea of conduction where uh, the particle will just simply transfer the kinetic energy because when you heat up something it's actually the kinetic energy of the particles or of the atom that they're vibrating the, the more vibrations the more vigorous vibration that you have that means more kinetic energy and that means greater temperature and so that energy when they collide with the other uh, just like what you learned about energy or even momentum earlier uh, that is passing on to the adjacent particles and that is the idea of conduction all right so these are the wordings that uh, if you want you can pause and have a look uh, here is a video that I find, uh, which is an experiment that is quite interesting. So uh, I will put the link in the description below and also on the playlist. So basically here is a metal stick and then they have set it up with uh, some west, like from the candle, that uh, to stick the iron nail on it. And then on the right hand side you can see there's a candle with the flame and so uh, simply by the idea of conduction, uh, what do you expect to see? So pause the video, pause this video, and try to go and watch that video. A few moments later. All right, here is a very classic idea in thermal physics. Uh, when you try to get, for example, two ruler. I know some of your ruler are made of like metal, and the other ruler could be. Uh, of wood or plastic and so if you don't have that uh, maybe you can go and find I don't know some utensils at home so maybe your chopsticks are wood and uh, your spoon and fork are metal right? so it doesn't really matter so the idea is since they are placed in the room for a long long time then for sure that they has to be the same temperature, right? But then when you try to touch the metal in your hand, you find out that, oh, it somewhat feel much colder than the other kind of material like wood or plastic. So why is that? The answer is not about temperature, it's about conductivity. Uh, as some of you may know, metal is a good conductor for both thermally and electrically. But of course, here we talk about thermally only. And while wood is bad conductor, or you can call it insulator. And so what it does when you touch with your hands is that the metal can conduct the heat away from you from your hand quickly because remember your hand uh, is probably warmer uh, that means of a greater temperature than the room so like maybe the room is 20 degrees celsius your body is 37 degrees celsius and so the heat will go away from your hand to the metal and this process for metal will be much faster than the wood and you can call or you can say that the conductivity conductivity the activity of conduction conductivity of metal is higher if you're really curious about why metal is the conductor uh, if you look at microscopically we can use this theory to explain and that is something to do with the free electron uh, the C of free or mobile electron uh, you may have heard about it in chemistry as well so they are free to move um, like between those atoms and they can help you to transfer those energy efficiently while for wood and plastic uh, they don't have these kind of mobile electrons 
Here is another setup showing you how you can design to find out which kind of metal are more conductive. So you can see stainless steel, copper, steel, brass, and aluminum. I actually can't see the one below. Uh, but anyway, the idea is similar to the previous video that you could see uh, to see which one simply would drop first because that is the heat transfer along the stick and and then basically melt the waste and so then that would drop uh, whatever is staying there so you can see that copper is the best and then following by brass aluminium and then uh, steel and stainless steel will be the last two before we talk about conduction you have to think about this what would happen if you pour oil into a cup of water so if you have some water and then you pour the oil inside think about it similarly what will happen if you have a cup of oil and then you pour the water in it? The answer is no matter which case, eventually when you let it rest and stay equilibrium, this is how it looks like. The water will be down below while oil will be at the top. Why is that? The reason is simply, as you should be able to recall, uh, something to do with density. The one that is less dense is going to stay at the top and water which is more dense will stay at the bottom. So this is the basic concept and idea you need for convection. If you try to generalize what we have talked about as an example, uh, you should find out that the density of liquid will affect which layer it will be. Uh, the more dense will be at the bottom, while the less dense will be at the top. And so you could, if you have that many kind of liquid, uh, you can recreate this tower, which uh, may look quite amazing. Uh, for the color, is some of them are just food coloring, obviously. Water is not green. So, uh, yeah, it's just to show you that for different layers, they can um, be really well located according to their density. So connecting this idea to convection, because we are talking about heat transfer, right? Think about liquid and gas, right? Both of them are fine, or we can call it fluid, because they are free to move. And when you heat them up, what they may do is they will expand Right, unless you confine them in a concealed container, but like normally you don't, right? So then they can expand, and when they expand, they become less dense because the volume becomes greater while mass remains the same, according to the equation that you learned. And so, in that case, it will change its density, and therefore, uh, you can have convection happen, just like what we mentioned. Uh, when it's cooler, it's more dense, and therefore the fluid, the gas, or the liquid can sink. Um, and the other words, the warmer one will rise up, while the cooler one would sink. So here is another animation to show you that if you're trying to just simply get a pot of water and you heat it up, uh, since the flame probably is in the middle, then you can kind of create a convection current, which is a really a movement of the particles. Uh, the hotter one, which is mainly closer to the flame due to conduction, uh, would rise up because their density is less. While the one at the side, because like the one, one in the middle is kind of go up, and so in order to kind of take up the space, the one at the side would go in instead. So that's why when you boil water, you don't have to go around, you know, you have to heat up evenly. Uh, by itself, it will already have a convection current. That's also the same idea when uh, if you live nearby the sea, you find out it's more windy usually. Uh, because in the daytime, the land is warmer than the sea because uh, they the, the sea will just take take up longer time to heat up. And so what happened is the land, since it's warmer, then the air on the land would go up and then the sea will come. I mean, the, the wind, 
the air from the sea will come to the land. Therefore, this is called the sea wind. Well, if you think of uh, maybe in some region or countries that there's there's no sea at all, and usually those places, I'm sure you you probably have learned it in geography. Uh, that is usually quite stuffy and uh, it, there's not much wind because if all the places are just land then there's no temperature difference and therefore you cannot have such a movement of air horizontally right because think about that the whole ground is plank so all the air would just go up or right? nothing would go uh, horizontal unless uh, it's a being really uh, the side one here's another example this is your grandfather and then he said, oh, I, I bought a new condi air condition. So um, would you suggest him to put the air condition at the top or at the bottom? And why? Think about it. Okay, assuming if you want to treat your grandfather well, then you should suggest him to put the air condition at the top. All right, the same idea goes with convection, where because uh, it's making cold air, so the cold air will sink, um, and because they have greater density, and so in that case, the whole room can be filled with cold air. Think about this: what if you install the air conditioner at the ground level that will be ridiculous because y unless you hate your grandfather okay that's fine but then what happened is you kind of having your lower body your legs uh, to be kind of uh, in, the, in the cloud of the cold air while your upper body will be as usual like as warm as usual so uh, you kind of create a temperature gradient across your body which definitely uh, not good for everybody uh, especially for elderly here is a similar example this time your grandma come to ask you uh, would you suggest to put the heater at the top or at the bottom Actually, it's very hard for me to find a picture of a heater like the one at the top because it doesn't make sense, right? For the heater, it should be something like the one at the bottom and since you warm up the air uh, and the air has less density and so they will go up, they will rise and so doing this can ensure the room can be filled with hot air equally everywhere um, and again, if you do it only with the top then you have your upper body feeling really hot while the lower body would feel nothing it would still be cold and again that's not something you want lastly the third heat transfer method is called radiation I'm sure that uh, you know about it and the special thing about radiation is it does not require any particles so it can travel through vacuum think about this for the thermometer, I'm sure now you're very familiar with thermometer. For these four, uh, what are the heat transfer method that they are relying on? Think about it. Okay, the first one obviously is by conduction. The second one, uh, you may not have seen it, but this is uh, for people who cook maybe meat or anything to put uh, inside and it's also done by conduction. You can see there is a probe where you can insert. And this one, obviously, you know, is there's no direct contact and obviously this is using radiation. And the last one that you may not have seen before, well, actually, I'm sure you do because uh, it's everywhere now. Uh, is the thermal camera so it's also relying on infrared radiation as we just mentioned infrared radiation this is something called the electromagnetic spectrum uh, you don't have to memorize it now but you come to this again next year when you study uh, the next year IGCSE and so um, 
the usual lights that allow us to see color is visible light right here all right it's very narrow right here and the infrared that we talk about is here and by the way notice that this is in scale okay so the the things that actually help us to see color is taking actually very small portion in the world uh, the infrared is something that is going beyond the red color so that's why you call it infrared right it's beyond the red color so as long as you are not at absolute zero uh, any object above this temperature would emit infrared radiation so basically everything but then the thing is we cannot see infrared with our naked eye and so that's why there's a camera uh, that allows us to visualize by just looking at infrared so you can see the scale here right so obviously you can see a boy holding a ball and uh, his body is probably the warmest in the picture and while the background is uh, rather cold if you look at the spectrum you should find out some other names like radio waves microwave x-ray and gamma ray and in fact microwave is also another kind of radiation in fact all of them are radiation but microwave is also another kind that you probably has used to heat up things before and of course that is microwave oven right so um, it simply just send out the microwave and uh, it also involves a more complicated physics idea called resonance so uh, basically the microwave can be absorbed the energy can be absorbed by the water molecules effectively so that's why when you use microwave uh, you need to make sure that there are water add to your food and so uh, to ensure that the food can be heated up effectively. To understand radiation better, you have to understand these first, uh, the color of light. Uh, one thing that just, just to remind you is not really relevant, uh, that uh, when we mix three basic color, red, green, and blue of light, we put them together, it become white because they are light. Uh, but then if you're doing your arts lesson, you are using like whatever tools, uh, color you use, you put them together, they will become black, right? Because uh, they will absorb all the light and uh, doesn't reflect anything. So that is the same idea when you see something that is like, for example, blue in color. Uh, that is why it reflects blue to you. And while absorbing other color in light as you know white light consists of all colors uh, in rainbow like red orange yellow green blue violet all right so the color you see is the one that is being reflected to your eye so that help us to explain what happened when you talk about radiation so here we've got four cans and uh, they were put equal distance from a heater so like Imagine outside is just there's a heater that's somehow warming it up or if you imagine uh, putting this under the sun to heat them up uh, Inside there are some water starting off with the same temperature So which one will be warmest after a long time say 10 minutes? So you can see there are shiny metal dull metal dull black and shiny black so according to what you have learned Think about which one will be the warmest. Similar to what we talk about, the color, the one that is dull black, absorb most of the color. And that is the same idea when they absorb the radiation, the infrared, and therefore the dull black should be the warmest after 10 minutes because it can absorb the heat radiation the best that means the most um, efficiently uh, while the shiny metal because it's shiny right and that is because they are being reflective so all the light most of the light not all but most of the light can reflect to you and therefore you can keep it cool in that case and you can also say that it is poorest at absorbing the heat radiation because most of them are reflected. This is called sunshade and probably you have seen people putting these uh, when they park the car. Obviously, the purpose is to reflect the light 
from the sun so then when they get back to the car uh, their seat will not be boiling hot simply so this is using the idea of radiation lastly think about the emission so uh, with the same four cans but then this time what you do is you fill up the warm water or even hot water inside the can and we would like to ask you which one will be having the warmest of course it will be still be slightly lower temperature than before but which one can retain the most the warmest water after the same time 10 minutes The idea is similar to the previous one. You should have the shiny metal to be the warmest because you can imagine the warm water which would emit the radiation would kind of emit, you know, radiate, right? That's what we call radiated into all direction. And But then since the container is shiny, so what it does is it will keep reflecting and reflecting and reflecting so not much of the infrared will be able to escape the can and therefore this will be warmest while for the dull black because they can absorb the radiation the most so what happened to the warm water inside is again of course they would also emit infrared but then the container will be able to absorb it very quickly and therefore the can will become very hot and so you can see that since the can become very hot, it can also lose the heat to the surrounding by both radiation as well as conduction as well. And therefore, double black will be, in theory, the coolest after 10 minutes because they are the best at emitting heat radiation. To conclude, as a rule of thumb that you can stick with, the surface that absorb radiation faster is also the same as they would emit faster and that is dull black while for the one that are slow absorbing slow they will also emit slow and that example could be shiny silver that's all for the recap from your junior science in the next video we'll try to put down some key information about conduction, convection, and radiation, and also try to see how IGCSC may ask you in the exam on this free heat transfer method. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.